On today's show, we're going to be looking at the Hollyland Mars 300, a wireless HDMI transmitter that is probably about the least expensive one you're going to find on the market today. Today we're talking about this wireless HDMI transmitter. And this is an interesting product to me because I've looked at wireless HDMI before. I thought it would be a really cool thing to add into this whole live broadcast system, but man, they're expensive. This is the first what I would consider to be an affordable one that I've seen on the market. Now, Hollyland, the company, reached out to me. They saw the show and they asked if I would be interested in reviewing this. So they have sent this to me for purpose of review today. I did not buy this. They sent this out. Um, as far as I know, I get to keep it, but, um, but I don't actually know that, to be honest. Uh, but we're going to find out just how good it is. So this show is going to be a two-parter. I'm going to show you the hardware itself, what comes in the box, explain what the buttons do. And then we're going to go into a second part of the show where I'm going to give you a tour, a behind-the-scenes tour of this setup behind me, just a shoot that I did yesterday, which is, I think, kind of interesting in itself, but it's also just so that we can see how the roaming HDMI or wireless HDMI operates in this type of an environment in the studio. And then I'm going to take the camera outside a little bit, but I don't know how well it's going to do because A, this is a metal building, B, the 300 foot is line of sight, and C, I won't be able to tell what's happening for the broadcast until I come back. So yeah, well, we're going to find out, but here's what we get. Two parts, transmitter and receiver. That's the receiver, that's the transmitter. It comes with five antennas, which is really nice, an extra one. So they just unscrew off, so when you're packing it away, these fold away nicely, and you can bend this and rotate it into whatever position you want. When you first turn them on, they're already paired, which was really nice. I was reading the manual, which is tiny. It's like a pamphlet. It's like an Apple-esque, there is no step two kind of a thing. When I first turned it on, I didn't know if I was going to have to do any pairing, but it just worked. It just already paired. If you need to, you can repair them. And also there is a channel cycle button on it. So if you're getting some interference, you can cycle through channels and it, it just does it all automatically. You push one button on either the transmitter or the receiver, the signal blanks out. It tells you it's looking for a signal and then it finds it and repairs and reconnects. That's pretty much all there is to it. On the transmitter, you've got an HDMI in, so that's going to be coming in from the camera, and then an HDMI loop out, which is nice. You can connect an external monitor if you need to. It has a DC power input, so if you do want to use this in a more studio environment where you can connect it to power, you can certainly do that. It comes with one AC adapter, and that really is designed for the receiver. The receiving end is likely to not be moving around, whereas the transmitter, most likely, you are going to be moving around. But it doesn't matter if you don't have that power, you can actually put a battery on both. So there's the transmitter and the receiver. This is a standard Sony battery receptacle for either one of those. And it goes in really quite nice and tight. That's nice and snug on there. I will say now that the battery's on, as far as I can tell, and maybe I'm missing something, but I couldn't find it and I went through the manual, there's no battery indicator on the unit. So I couldn't find a way to see how much power in the battery is left. So with that in mind, you may want to buy NP batteries that have a little battery detector thing on there, or just keep tons of them handy because I just, I really don't know. And I haven't used it long enough. I literally unboxed it this morning. I have not used it long enough to know how long the batteries actually last. Anyway, so there you got your HDMIs and the power port. Uh, the two antennas, of course, go onto the top there. And the other side here, pretty straightforward, a power switch. It's a nice physical recessed power switch. So it's a bit hard to accidentally bump. The pairing button, if you need to do that, an HDMI port for doing upgrades, the channel selector. So basically you just push it and just wait and it grabs a new channel. And then status lights, link and video. And it's not plugged into a camera, so there's no video. And link is flashing because the receiver is not turned on, so it has not made a connection yet. That's all there is to the transmitter. Really straightforward. On the receiving end, it is largely the same kind of thing. You'll see on here there are two HDMI outs, which is very, very nice. You have on here the power port that I talked about, so this we will be using, or you could go better if you needed to. On the other side on here, it's pretty much the same as on the other one, actually. So you've got your on switch, the pairing, the upgrade, um, a channel slash OSD. OSD, of course, is on-screen display. When it is connected to a screen, you push that and you'll get some information about the signal that it's receiving, drop frames, and so on, that'll show up on screen on there. So with that said, let's hook this thing up. So I've got the receiver here. I'm going to take my power and plug this guy in. This does have a nice screw mount on there. So once you thread that in, it's, it's nicely locked into place. HDMI out. There we go. Well, let's hook it up to the camera next. So this is, this is a little ridiculous. I first, when I was first playing with it today, I mounted this, oh, I forgot to mention the things on the back here. There's a cold shoe, male cold shoe end, I guess you call it, that is designed to screw into the bottom, but there's this extra plate that it comes with to add a quarter 20 to the, I guess you'd call it the front of it. So you have other mounting options. When I first was playing with it around the studio, 
I mounted this onto the bottom and put this into the hot shoe on the camera and walked around like that, and that was fine. But of course, now you don't have a place to put your microphone. And if you want to have an external monitor, you don't have a place for that either. So I went and put my small rig together and rigged everything up onto here. So I've got my GH5 in there with a 12 millimeter lens. I've got the Rode microphone on here pointing backwards because I'm going to take this around like this and narrate to you. And I'll explain why I have to have a mic on there in a moment. I've got the Fuel World monitor that I just showed last week, and now this thing is going to attach on as well. Now, the, uh, the reason that there is a microphone on there, so obviously right now I'm mic'd up, you're hearing me through that mic there. This is not transmitting in real time. I never expected that it would, uh, but it's not. Even if it was off by a couple of frames, the audio delay would be unnerving. So I didn't expect it to be off. It's probably off by yeah, maybe it's a second, maybe maybe not quite a second, maybe like three quarters of a second. I haven't measured it, but there is a delay, as you would expect. As long as the video and audio come from the same place, then everything will be delayed, but it'll be in sync. If, however, I was showing you video from here and I point the camera at me and I'm talking through this mic, you'd be hearing me before seeing the video and it wouldn't work. So what I've done is I've rigged up this mic pointing backwards so that I can walk around, narrate to you, it'll be in sync, and occasionally if I wanna turn around and talk to it, I can. And I realize that if I'm just narrating while I'm walking around, that delay wouldn't really matter, uh, but it's how we're setting it up. Okay, so this is in place. Let's get the, let's see, this is coming out of the camera, so that's gonna go into the HDMI in, and this is going to the monitor, so that's gonna go to the HDMI loop out. And it's kinda, okay, this is really off balance. I mean, clearly this is not an ideal situation here, but it's what I've got right now. I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could figure out a way to do this a little bit better. Let me just power everything up. And I'm gonna leave the mic off for a moment so we don't get any fun audio flipping back through. And we are now wired up. So there we go, there is the wireless rig. So just to give you an idea of what the delay is like. So here, now we're pointing at me, there you go. So whatever delay you're seeing right now between my dialogue and the picture of me, that's the delay that you can expect. It's $4.99 on Amazon. That is, that's a really good deal. I did a search on B&H for wireless HDMI, and I just wanna show you what the other options are that are out there. Uh, here is a transmitter receiver pack, $1,400. Here's another one from Teradek, $2,500. Looks like it may not even be available anymore. Here's a Cinegear one, $1,349, and that's at $550 off. There's another one from Cinegear that's $1,099, and that's, a, well, 150 meters, okay, so that's 1,000 feet. So these are larger devices uh, transmitting usually larger range, that one's 700 feet. You're definitely getting more range with these more expensive ones, but you eventually get to the one that we're looking at here, and it's 300 foot range, so a little bit less range, but it is only $500. So this is, as far as I know, the most affordable wireless HDMI solution out there. Of course, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. So well, let's take this thing on a tour and see what happens. Click on the link below to see the second part of the show where I give a tour of the background here using entirely this wireless setup.